Monks are truly terrifying in Baldur's Gate 3. They might very well be the strongest class in the game, bar none. Ironically, because the way of the monk consists out of equanimity towards all living beings, friends and foes alike. The way of aggression is not the monk's way, and adhering to virtues that promote pacifism, self-restraint and forgiveness is the way. However, under the rules of self-defense, a monk can attack their enemies. But not all monks have the same definition of self-defense. Some monks are a bit more... Hmm, let's say flexible with that definition. This video will focus on how to make you an overpowered monk early game, level 1 to 6. And that is done intentionally, as building an overpowered monk early on is quite a bit different compared to being powerful in Act 2 and 3 when you have much more tools to your exposure. This guide is then also catered to make you succeed on tactician mode, and all footage was accordingly recorded on tactician mode. But before we proceed, I just have one question for you. Do you think you are able to handle the power that will be given to you today? The knowledge that you will obtain today will change you forever, so proceed with caution. For race, honestly, it really doesn't matter what you choose, as you can become really powerful as a monk as anything really, even as a dragonborn that has the worst race features. However, if I have to give a personal recommendation, it's going to be either a wood half elf or a wood elf. The extra bonus to your movement is honestly just really nice that these races provide provide you. And some additional benefits like advantage against saving throws for being charmed and magic not being able to put you to sleep is definitely nice as well. I personally went with the wood half elf as you get proficiency in light armor and shield in addition to those features which can open up some nice extra options for gear later on. But before we continue, breaking news. I want to thank Warhaven for sponsoring today's video. Warhaven is a free-to-play 12 vs 12 PvP medieval fantasy combat game and it has a really cool world because it blends this medieval and modern setting to create this very unique fantasy world. It has also a fun dynamic melee combat system that is easy to pick up but at the same time can also challenge hardcore gamers. You have six different character classes to use for these epic battles and these different characters all have a cool background story that is fitting for their class. And if that wasn't enough, you can then also transform into immortals which are these supernatural characters that can use epic powers and turn the tides of battle all by themselves. The game also allows you to squad up with your friends and work together as a team to dominate the battlefield. So you have the choice, are you going to be a team player and work together to bring victory or are you going to act on your own and feel the freedom of battle? The combat in the game starts with fundamentals like swinging your weapon or raising your guard which can be done with a simple mouse click and you can already have success with that. But it's also fun to take it to the next level, to uncover the true potential of the game's fast-paced and nuanced combat, which is a thing players that are willing to challenge themselves can look forward to. Warhaven releases the 20th of September and is completely free to play, so there's nothing to lose, check the link in the description and make sure to add Warhaven to Steam wishlist right now. For our abilities, we're going to completely dump strength at this point in time and make dexterity instead our main ability and put it at 16. Monk scales its damage either with strength or dexterity based on which of the two is higher, but we're actually going to have a higher strength in game using certain items, and so the high dexterity is there mainly to give us nice initiative as well as armor class. Then we get 16 constitution for the sustain and 14 wisdom. Now wisdom is also really good for a monk, it gives you armor class if you're unarmed, which we are going to be early on definitely, and later on its modifier will also enhance our damage output, because we unlock various ways of applying extra damage through our unarmed attacks at level 6. So wisdom is always going to be relevant. Then 12 charisma because it's nice to have some charisma as the face of your party. Monk starts out really strong actually. You have a main attack and then also a bonus attack that allows you to hit your enemies twice. So that is three different hits in one turn if you have key points. Otherwise you get an unarmed attack as a bonus action anyways that doesn't consume a key point. So worst case scenario you still have two hits in a turn every single turn. This principle of having both attacks for your main action as well as your bonus action is why Monk becomes so powerful. Then there's also a lot of synergy with your attacks being unarmed in the first place which makes it even better. And you also get more key points the more you level. So you can use your special attacks and effects more and more and these special attacks are really good as well. For getting to level 2 I recommend you to clear the ship in its entirety and kill the commander and maybe even one or two of the cambians to get as much xp as possible doing so will make you at least level two and give you also substantial amounts of xp for even level three just by clearing this area if you're playing on tactician mode, it can be a bit difficult to do this, so I highly recommend you to get Shadowheart and us in your team. Go to Shadowheart's spellbook and prepare command. Then when you get to the commander, use command to make him drop the Everburn Blade 
and give the Everburn Blade to Lazel. Accordingly, make sure to keep the Mind Flayer alive as long as possible to tank his hits, which now will be with his bare fists, so he will lose a lot of his damage, and Lazel will now pump as he can use the Everburn Blade to deal good amounts of damage. I then also recommend you to pick up as many of the purple explosive barrels around the ship, place them near the commander for when the Cambians come to blow everything up and deal really good AoE damage that way to the commander and the Cambians combined. Then ultimately you definitely can push for that extra Cambian kill on tactician mode, but whether you want to do so or not depends on you. Killing the commander will already put you at level 2. Like I said, this will give you at least level 2 monk and good XP to the next level. Now level 2 doesn't give you anything really special or so, just a few useful additional moves, mostly for defensive purposes. At level 2 you can keep using your 3 hits a turn to make sure you're a menace on the battlefield and you're probably not even going to remember much of your level 2 experience as you will be level 3 in no time. At level 3 you get to choose your subclass and in my opinion open hand is just the strongest of the 3. It's the one that also fits the role playing idea of being a monk that uses his fists to destroy his opponents the most as well. You get a variety of different flurry blows that are actually really powerful as well at level 3. Stagger can be useful if you want to use these punches defensively. So for example if you want to hit your enemies and then subsequently move away and prevent the enemy from taking a opportunity attack. Pushing is nice for when your enemy is near a cliff or near a chasm or anything really that you can push your enemy towards to to make them take fall damage or even just kill them instantly and if the effect fails you still get the damage from the punches themselves so it's all good anyways the topple effect is the most amazing one of the three since it's the least situational prone is always a good effect to have on your enemies as all subsequent attacks on the target will be with advantage so it's really good that means it's not a bad idea to start off with this flurry of blows as it's a bonus attack to make sure your enemies get the prone effect to then follow up with your main attack that consumes your action some people tend to stick towards using the main action first and then their bonus action afterwards out of tradition so just putting it out there that you obviously can swap around the order Now at level 2 or 3, you're immediately right out of the gate want to prioritize getting to two different locations. First one is going to be the Druid's Grove, which you probably will get to anyways naturally by just playing the game normally and the Blighted Village. And why you want to go to these spots is because there are a total of four different items we want to pick up as early as possible to give us a significant increase in our power. At the Druid Grove, you will come across a variety of traders. The first one of interest is going to be Auntie Ethel. Auntie Ethel sells a staff that was just made for monks, the Carolyn's Grace. It boosts our unarmed attacks by making them more likely to hit, as well as just do more damage. It also rewards us for not wearing armor, as we get a nice plus two bonus to our saving throws. This thing is absolutely nuts for a monk, and you can get it pretty much within five minutes of playing the game. Obviously, you need some gold to buy it, but you can get that easily. Just kill and loot things in the area. Across Auntie Ethel, you'll find Damon, which is holding our bow. Damon sells you the hunting short bow. This is a plus one bow that will give us advantage against monstrosity type of enemies. So we get a really good bow early on for the passive effect that does in fact work with our melee attacks. But the bow also gives us now an opportunity to supplement our melee attacks with a ranged attack if necessary. For example, because we ran out of movement speed. So right off the bat, we have two really good items. In the Blighted Village then, you want to pick up the Razors of Defense, which you can find in the Apollo cellar which you can access if you go through the hatch in this building right here in the blighted village inside the cellar you can find them in the gilded chest in the south these bracers of defense give us a plus two to our armor class as long as we are unarmed so it's pretty much an item meant for us monks and these bracers will help us out greatly with our survivability then another great piece in this village is going to be the haste helm which you can find right here next to the waypoint the haste helm will give us momentum for three turns which is essentially three meters of extra movement and that is really good for a monk movement on a monk is pretty much fundamental and we want to get as much of it as possible hence why we also took a wood half l for our race having a lot of movement makes sure we maximize the chance that we can utilize all our attacks that we get per turn when you've killed something with your first hit the most annoying thing that i've personally found is when you don't have enough movement to get to a second target to hit them stacking movement through items like the haste helm prevents that and makes you even more deadly as you can be everywhere on the battle field moving from target to target like sonic himself and on the topic of moving from target to target it is time to move from your mouse or your finger to wherever you have it right now to the like button on this video and the subscribe button to my channel as well as the bell button and click all of those thanks for doing that it helps out don't forget to do it
Now, there is another thing that we need to talk about that you need to start investing in at these levels. Remember when I said dumb strength and we went full dexterity? Well, yes. So technically we are a dexterity monk. And now with our newfound amazing staff, we can use that thing as well to attack with. However, Auntie Ethel that we just visited sells three elixirs of hill giant strength for around 80 gold each. And these elixirs set our strength at exactly 21. Hence why we dumb strength at eight in character creation. Each time you drink an elixir, it lasts all the way till your next long rest so you benefit from just a single elixir for quite a while and the best thing is after each long rest auntie ethel will get three new elixirs and restock her store so you can infinitely keep buying these potions from her as long as you don't start her quest now you don't need to infinitely keep buying these elixirs as we will respect later on into strength but at least to level four or five you can keep buying these elixirs and use them to get your strength to 21 this will give us all the benefits from high strength which is damage and high dexterity which in this case will be initiative and armor class at the same time to illustrate how great it is to benefit from both at the same time here is an example of my level 3 monk dealing like 50 damage to a level 5 enemy just make sure to not go south of the blighted village until you are done with these elixirs as going south will make auntie ethel teleports towards there and leave the druid grove starting her quest chain now our 21 strength from these elixirs is then amplified when we get to choose our first feat at level 4. There should not be a single doubt in your mind in regards to which feat to choose right here as a monk, tavern, brawler, no questions asked. Put the point in strength and read the description. Our strength modifier is going to be added twice to our attack rolls and damage for all our unarmed attacks. So we will rarely miss going forwards and start dealing absolutely insane damage. I honestly don't have to say too much, the footage says it all. With this newfound power you can absolutely stomp everything going forwards. You will dominate every encounter when using the power of your fist. Hit after hit, you are going to be victorious. It feels so satisfying as well, just punching the ever-living you-know-what out of your opponents. At this point, you can also drop the staff and just go full unarmed to benefit from Tavern Brawler, because for each of your attacks, your unarmed attacks will now out-damage your attacks with the staff, which is only amplified, by the way, by level 5 and 6. Level 5 gives you an extra attack and gives you another variation of unarmed attacks, one that can stun you your enemies which is easily one of the best cc's in the game so this is absolutely a killer move at level six you then also get the earlier mentioned additional damage in the form of necrotic psychic or radiant damage so you can accordingly pick one depending on your enemy for example the undead type of creatures in the game are usually weak against radiant damage so in that case you would choose the radiant damage option level six also gives you key empowered strikes by the way which is a really nice feature that pretty much assures you that certain enemies with certain resistances and immunities will not make you useless anymore more. Your monk will always be an absolute menace on the battlefield going forward. And oh, you also get wholeness of body at level 6, which is a great sustain tool as it regains your key points, heals you and grants you another bonus action. So pretty much from level 3 to level 6, you will have insane level ups back to back. However, we need to finish off our gear. So first of all, I would recommend to get the crusher ring when you get to the goblin camp as well. This will give you even more movement, which helps out with the earlier mentioned principle of why we want to stack movement. And regarding the other ring slot, I would recommend the ring of protection but it's tied to a quest so only if you are willing to do what it takes you can also then get the moon drop pendant for your amulet slot really early on as well at like level two or three i would however not put as much as a prio on this amulet as the other mentioned gear pieces earlier on but it's still a nice option that helps out with sustain but most importantly when you get to the mountain pass you want to get the gloves of dexterity these will set your dexterity at 18 and give you plus one attack really good gloves that you can get from the trader in the crash from this point onwards you can then also stop drinking the elixirs and start doing auntie ethel's quest respect then accordingly and get these stats we're now going to completely dump dexterity and switch our points between dexterity and strength so strength becomes our main ability now and dexterity becomes our dump ability with its point set at the absolute minimum of eight because we have the gloves which will set our dexterity at a whopping number of 18 after doing auntie ethel's quest get the hair and give it to wisdom and with all of that we will now have really high stats in everything that is important to us 18 strength with 10 Tavern Brawler, 16 Constitution, 16 Wisdom thanks to Auntie Ethel's hair, and 18 Dexterity thanks to the Gloss. Also make sure to do Volo's quest after visiting the Goblin's camp and let him do surgery on you. This will essentially give you true sight and make you see all the invisible creatures surrounding you, which is really good because remember how much movement we have? Exactly. 
Then finally, the only thing I have not mentioned yet for early game gear are the chest and boots. For these, you want to go to the Underdark and get the Blood Guzzler Garb for your chest piece, which you can get from Bolette right here. This chest piece will essentially compensate for us getting hit, which will obviously happen to us since we are a melee DPS and always in the face of our enemies. So it compensates in that sense that every time we get hit, it will increase our damage through the Wrath mechanic for our next attack. For boots, we're just going to go with the good old boots of Genial Striding that you can get from Blurk right here. These boots negate the effects of difficult terrain, like reducing your movement, so nothing can stop us anymore with these boots going forward. Regarding companions, the ideal team for a monk will be something like this in my opinion. Our monk is a melee DPS, so we want a tank in the form of a barbarian like Karlak or a fighter like Lazel. The synergies between the tank and the monk will be nice as the tank can tank many hits that the monk otherwise would get as the monk will be in the face of our enemies all the time. For your controller, I then highly recommend you to use a lore Bart or a lore Bart with some multi-classing. Two reasons, the extra short rest you get from a Bart which replenishes our key points, so that is really nice. And then two, lore Barts are the kings or queens of CC even early on. Putting a whole person on an enemy and then accordingly letting the monk go loose is just chef's kiss. So many critical hits back to back, it's just too good. Many people consider the Gith Yankee Patrol as one of the most difficult encounters in Act 1 and as you see, we just completely decimate them like this. You can respect any companion into a Bart or get a hireling. For the final spot in the team, I'm going to recommend a Mage Blaster as it's the only thing we don't have yet. So either a Warlock like Will or a Sorcerer or Wizard like Gale or a multi-class variation of those classes in some sorts. And that was it for this video. This video will be continued with like the mid to late game version of this build, so stay tuned for that.